welcome back to New at LU. Now I know we've been talking about it for a while now. Yeah, and today is finally the day. Be sure to make plans tonight to come out with your friends to Divinity Lawn for some mini golf fun. too early to get in the Christmas spirit and Coffee House actually isn't that far away. Also, the Virginia Christmas Spectacular is coming up very soon. Now, I was a part of this show for eight years and I absolutely loved it and you might be interested in getting involved too. Welcome back, Liberty students. If you're looking for ways to serve this semester, we invite you to audition for this year's Virginia Christmas Spectacular at Thomas Road Baptist Church. Join the actors, singers, dancers, instrumentalists, and many other volunteers needed to pull off this Broadway scale production. Auditions will be held September 8th through the 10th at Thomas Road. Visit trbc.org slash vcs for more information and to sign up. Student Activities Couch Acoustics returns this Tuesday to the Starbucks Montview. Yeah, make sure to come and grab some coffee, chill, and listen to some amazing live music. Imagine if they had a guest artist there one day. Maybe like John Mayer? I was thinking more Taylor Swift. Yeah, maybe one day. LU Sin has numerous study abroad, international internships, and short-term travel opportunities available for Liberty students. Yeah, if you're looking to dust off that suitcase and get traveling, meet with the faculty who are leading exciting 10-day academic trips. They'll travel to places like Ireland and Japan, or you could connect with Liberty Partners that offer internships in beautiful countries like Costa Rica and South Africa. Or perhaps you're looking to spend a semester studying abroad in Israel or Australia. LEU Send has something to offer for everyone in over 150 locations worldwide. Come check out the LEU Send Travel Fair in Montview to discover where your passport will take you next. LEU Serve Now is the disaster relief and humanitarian aid response arm of Liberty University. If you have a passion for helping people throughout the world who have been affected by disasters or crisis, Serve Now is currently recruiting students into the program. Serve Now teams have deployed to disaster and crisis sites in Kentucky, Greece, Poland, Nebraska, California, and many more. The Serve Now application period is currently open, but it will be closing soon. To learn more and apply, text Serve Now to 839 858. Our volleyball team starts their home games this weekend. Be sure to show up tonight and support them throughout the weekend. Yeah, they're always doing some pretty cool handshakes, you know, tossing some swag into the crowd. It's a great time. You have to be there. Football season is finally here. And just as a little teaser, we have a special video for you, the LU community. Take a look. History made tonight. Liberty in its first ever bowl game wins the Gear Bowl. Go, go. It's Liberty playing three and three. And bowl wins the last three years. Around here, the mountaintop isn't just a metaphor, it's a place. Wow, Annie, that's a pretty exciting video. If that doesn't get them excited for the home opener next weekend, I'm not sure what will. Yeah, we have an incredible home schedule lined up for this season, and our team, they look pretty good. All right, friends, that's all that's new. Enjoy your day at LU. God has called you to be extraordinary.
morning, Liberty. Let's put our hands together. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Hey. Team us out. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happened when we proclaim your great name. Your great name. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. There's future grace 
that's mine today that Jesus Christ has so I can face tomorrow for tomorrow's in your hands and all I need you will provide just like you always have so I'm fighting about some I know how the story ends.
Almighty, seated on the throne. He's seated on the throne of glory. I lift it up. Your presence fills the temple when we worship you. Oh, we worship you. Yeah. Hallelujah to the one who came and made a Hallelujah to the one who died and rose again. And Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the great opportunity that we have to come together again and to lift up your name. Lord, I pray that you would bless our time together today. We pray that it would honor you and you alone. And God, we pray that our hearts would be pointed and directed to you and your will for our lives, God. And we give you the praise and the glory of the work that you are going to do as our God forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, guys, go ahead and have a seat if you would. Before we get to introducing our guest for today, I want to introduce some other guests that we have with us as well today. Uh, right over here is a guest of our School of Government here today is Lieutenant Commander Kirk Lippold. If you would stand, Commander, U.S. Navy Commander. It's great to have you here. Thank you for joining with us. We appreciate your service to our country. Thank you so much. And also, we have some other special guests here that I want to introduce to you. Now, you guys know, I mean, I know we're only like a week or so into school uh, here at Liberty, but uh, probably already you've recognized we have some pretty incredible faculty here at Liberty University. And there are a couple of faculty members that are here today that are not any longer, they're not any longer our faculty members, but they served for 31 years here at Liberty. Uh, Sandy Mathis, if you would stand, she was a math teacher, a music teacher, sorry, music teacher here at Liberty for 31 years. And also her husband, Jake, stand if you would, Jake Mathis, he was the track coach here from 1977 to 2007, 30 years, our track coach. And in fact, if you go over now and you see the field over there, it's called Mathis Hopkins Field. That's the Mathis right there, in case you ever wonder what that is. So thank you for all that you've done for Liberty through the years. Hey, we're excited to have a special guest with us today, you know, obviously with our first Liberty football game tomorrow night against Southern Miss, even though it's away. It's kind of fitting that we actually have a former NFL star with us here today, uh, 2005 NFL MVP, which is pretty cool. Probably cooler is the fact that in 2007, he was the cover of Madden NFL video games. And so that part of it's probably a little bit cooler. But before we actually show you a little bit more about uh, Sean Alexander and, and uh, all that he has done and is doing for the kingdom of God, I saw as I was driving in this morning, there was a student walking who had a Seattle Seahawks jersey on. Are you here today? Are you here in the room? Are you here? Come on down, real quick. Come on down. Come on, run down, real quick. Run. Is there more than one? Is there more than one? Come on, get down here. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on, quick. Both of you guys, come on. Come on. Come on. I want all of you guys to come up on the stage really quick. Come up on the stage. If you wore your Seahawks jersey, come on, fast. Run. Run. This guy actually had it in his backpack. He's putting it on right now. There you go. Right over there, guys. Right over there. Over there. Over there. Guys, come up here really quick. Hey, Katie, where's Katie? Where's our photographer, Katie? Oh, here, right here. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to introduce Sean in a moment, but just if you would just like humor me for a moment. Hey, Sean, come on up here really quick if you would. Sean. 
Really fast. Okay, let's center it up, guys. Come on, come on, come on. Center it up. Okay, guys, get together. We're going to get a picture right here. Sean, stand in the middle there. There we go. All right, great. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. So, Sean Alexander is going to speak for us today. Someone check that kid's pulse in a little bit. Make sure he's not having a heart attack when he gets back to his seat. But Sean's going to speak with us today again. NFL MVP, played for eight years in the NFL, all kinds of records, all kinds of, of rushing records, incredible things that he's done. Most importantly, he and his wife, Valerie, listen to this, have had 12 children, which is amazing. But... To introduce our speaker for today, I want you to watch this video about Sean Alexander. Man, that was pretty awesome. Um, you know, if I told you guys about the last two weeks of my life, you guys would actually really feel something. You know, I've lost my voice, wasn't sure if I was going to be able to talk. There's been some really great spiritual warfare going on back in my house. And uh, when that happens, usually two things are about to take place. One, there's a, an assignment that I'm going to have to have that God's given me that's going to shake generations. Or two, there's a message that somebody needs to hear that's going to change their life forever. And so as exciting it is to come and share some awesome stories about football, some of that stuff is razzle-dazzle. Uh, let's not miss what God wants to do today. I think about uh, when I was in my early 20s, I went to a big conference with one of my good friends, and his dad jumped on the stage to get ready to give a message. And he said, you know, there were people that were alive when Jesus was walking on this earth and they missed him. He was performing miracles, he was touching lives, he was setting people up to be saved for eternity, and they were busy, worried about school, worried about doing their clothes, playing, they didn't play football, so probably soccer. <laughs> busy. So I wanna pray that we actually tap in, that we actually get ourselves lined up to hear from the Holy Spirit that God would be able to do something with each and every one of us that shifts generations. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you're so good to us. I thank you for this moment. I thank you the fact that there's spiritual warfare that goes on for your children because you let us know that we can only depend on you and that you will bring victory. I thank you for every person that gets to hear my voice, that a soul will be changed, that fire will be burning inside of them to share how great you are 
that there will be ambassadors for your kingdom that are just go on for eternity sharing your glory and sharing your story. May we never take these moments for granted. Bless us and keep us for your will to be done. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, uh, Pastor John was telling some really cool things. When I was in high school, I was the number one high school player in the country. And there was some thing called ESPN that I didn't really even know what it was um, that was following me around for school. I was one of the first people that they followed around like that. That's normal to you all. Not from a kid from Florence, Kentucky. Nah. I went on to the University of Alabama and y'all know what we say. <laughs> Kings of confetti, y'all know what we do. Um, and I broke a bunch of records there and, and it was awesome. And I was selected in the first round to the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> Obviously y'all know some people that know that. So, uh, so my life has extremely been blessed in the football realm. Yes, it is true, I have one wife. I only know my wife. Y'all know what that means. Uh, <laughs> and we have had 12 children. <laughs> we figured it out, shut up, shut up, shut up. Okay. You guys are <laughs> One wife, 12 kids, one king. That's the motto. You know, I love talking about family. And I am definitely a liberty dad. John, you're not supposed to say nothing, but I'm a liberty dad. <laughs> My wife's a liberty mom. We are part of the liberty family. We need to get t-shirts made. That should be the number one Father's Day gift, Mother's Day gift, and brother and sister gift. Liberty, can we get that set up? Liberty dad, Liberty mom, Liberty. we should get that going, right? What do y'all think? Would y'all buy that for y'all's family? Come on, I mean, we gotta get that going. You know, but the thing that I wanted to tell y'all is this. As much as I want to tell you about family and doing it God's way and how wonderful it is, that's not the story that I get to brag on God about. You know, my dad had nine kids from four different women. I play, I'm the youngest son, I'm the baby boy, I play the young, good-looking son of the family. Don't lie, it's, 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 a, it's a tough world, but it's mine. My dad had a complicated life. He made complicated decisions and it was just complicated. But I'm always one of those people that wanna dig into what really happened, what's really going on. And I started asking my dad about his dad. And my dad's dad, my grandfather, who I never knew, spent a lot of time in jail because, and when he was a young man, he saw someone talking to his Superfly honey, that'd be my grandma. Um, they had a confrontation and he killed the guy. So it's two generations from being a murderer in my family. We go to the other side of my family, my mom, and she is just a lover of Jesus. You know, everybody has that big mama in the neighborhood, that's my mom. One day I'm gonna write a book about my mom because I used to ask her, how did you end up with dad? I mean, we love dad and dad's a totally different person now, but like, how did you end up with him? And she said, you know, when he went through the beginning stages of his life, I just thought he went through a bad time and really, I fell for Christian game. Ladies, I want you to hear this. This is when a guy seems like he's loving Jesus, but really the world's kicked him around and he just knows how to have good behavior. So I just wanna make sure, 
Let's establish something real. Don't fall for the God with Christian game. Fall for the one that really loves Jesus. So my mom's mom was 19 years old dating an older man. And one day, she found out she was pregnant. She comes up to this gentleman and says, I've got exciting news. I'm pregnant. And he said, what? He said, it's okay, I love you and I wanna get married, let's get married. And he said, I can't. You don't love me, we can't be married, this can't happen, can you get that fixed? She says, I don't understand, what's going on? We're, we're, we're together, we should be married. And he said, no, I can't, I'm already married. So if you go two generations from my mom's side, you've got adultery. You go one, two generations from my dad's side, you've got murder. Where does that leave me? But God. I want to give you a word that I want you to understand and let it sink down to the core of who you are. The word is called chosen. Do you understand that I was chosen by God? I'm looking across the room and I'm seeing a bunch of people that were chosen. God did it. He set the stage, he's sovereign, he knows exactly what's gonna happen and he set you all to be in this room right now, regardless of the past that your grandma did, grandpa did, mother did, dad did, brother, sister did, that you have done. You're chosen. John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit shall abide so that whatever you ask the Father in the name, he will give to you. Chosen. Now when I was growing up, I wasn't a person that actually understood scriptures. Whew, I didn't think I read scriptures. But at 10 years old on an Easter Sunday, our whole family went to church. And I went to one of those churches, St. Stephen's Baptist Missionary Church, a lot of titles, black church, pastor was up there moonwalking down the aisle, climbing up, the, climbing on the pews, he's good. That was a church I grew up in. And on that Easter Sunday, something amazing happened. I started looking around and I saw grown men crying. I saw sister so-and-so in the front pew and I see her stand up, yes sir, sit back down. I didn't know what that was all about. <laughs> but the power of God was so strong in that room that Sunday. I leaned over to my mom and I said, mom, what's going on? She said, some people are going through things, some people are coming out of things, and some people are preparing for what's going on right now. And they've realized the answer is Jesus. So at 10 years old, I said my first prayer. I said, God, I don't know much, but I know how to be obedient. Jesus, I wanna know you. You show me what to do and I'll do it. And I felt from that moment, God was like saying, yeah, you're my chosen guy and I'm gonna walk you through some things. And I began to do and be a part of some of the most incredible conversations with God. I would be that person that could have dreams and I would tell y'all some stories, but I would have dreams and they would come true. I remember telling my mom, hey mom, I've had this dream of a car wreck and would you please be careful? Friday morning. Hey mom, I had the dream, please be careful. Saturday morning, hey mom, I just wanna tell you like I didn't have the dream. She's like, oh my gosh, let me tell you. 
You know, Friday after work, I was driving through Covington, Kentucky, and, you know, it's a bunch of one-way streets, so I was driving really slow, and, and a little girl was on her bike, and I saw her, and I jammed my brakes, and she slid, and the bike went right over there, and I, I ran over her, her tire, but I was driving so slow, nothing happened to her. She just got up, and I just damaged her bike, but man, if I was driving any faster, I wouldn't have been able to stop. I'd have hit the girl. Those are kind of dreams I was having from 10, 11, 12. I mean, you know, some of my boys hate me, and some of the guys I've discipled, they also hate me because I'd be like, uh, do you know a girl that looks like, and they'd be like, man, I hate you. I'm going to repent. <laughs> I'm like the worst person if you want to be scandalous to be a mentor for it because I'm going to figure it out. Like, I'm like, hey, it's really weird, but pretty much if you're with me, you never can really do anything. God's hands on me. It's going to be on you. Let's ride chosen. But when I got to a little bit older, I went to the University of Alabama and I was a freshman and it was really cool. One of the things I did love about Alabama was there was just some strong Christian men on the team. I challenge this with every football team that I go speak to. I'm like, man, if you strong Christian guys would, would stand up, you might be helping mold the next general for God's army. And so when I was there, one of the guys challenged me to memorize a scripture. And I said, memorize a scripture? He says, man, I see you and like you're walking with God and you, you kind of have the spooky prayer thing and it keeps on happening. And I never see you read the Bible. And I was like, gosh, I don't, I don't know how to do that. So I'm 19 years old and I'm a freshman. And he says, well, hey, why don't you read something with your number on it? I was like, oh, okay, cool, 37, I got that, cool. So I read some things and some stuff just made no sense at all. Somebody be got somebody or something. But then I read Psalms 37, four. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. God, I've got some desires. There's some things I really want to know. Can you, can you tell me and show me that I'm really yours? Does anybody ever want to know that question? Can you just, can you have something happen to me that I just, I need to know like I'm fully yours. Can you just make it happen? And so typically at the University of Alabama, Thursday night the teams get their hair cut and I was a freshman so I go last. So I probably went to bed about two o'clock in the morning. I woke up Friday, we went to class, <clears throat> and, and then after class, um, I got my suit on, and we got on a team plane, and we flew, and we, and we flew to Baton Rouge to play against LSU. LSU and Alabama is usually a big game every November. It was crazy, and so, so as we get there, we land, and my roommate says, man, I got the PlayStation. Shout out to EA Sports. It's in the game. Anyway, so, uh, so, <laughs> so, we get there, and we're about to play some video games, and it's all fun, and we're having a good time, and the coach knocks on the door, and it's fairly late, and he says, hey, boys, lights out, um, you know, it's room check, and I jump up right away, and I say, coach, I'm the third string running back, my room dog's the fourth string running back, we ain't even going to play, we can still play the video games. Now, y'all know what I wanted him to say. Well, Sean, you never know, this could be your great moment. You never know what's gonna happen. Man, you gotta always, next man up, you might have to be ready. That is not what he said. <laughs> he looked at me, third stringer, freshman. He looked at the roommate, fourth stringer, and he said, yeah, don't keep up the players. Shut the door. <laughs> it still hurts my feelings, I know. Yeah, yeah. So we stay up, and by the time we play that game that Saturday night, I probably have slept about nine hours in the last three days. So the game starts. Watching around, the game's going on, and, and the starter gets hurt. And the backup, he gets hurt. And I'm looking around like, it's me. <laughs> Freshman. Third stringer, no sleep, don't even know all the plays. My first two carries are touchdowns. I 
I make some crazy cool runs, and I end the game with 20 carries, 291 yards, four touchdowns. That night had nothing to do with football. That night, God was giving me this transformational handshake saying, son, you're mine. You all might not get to go score four touchdowns at 291 yards against LSU. I mean, some of y'all, you look kind of athletic. I mean, <laughs> it might not happen like that, but do you understand, like, our Heavenly Father is looking to give you a transformational handshake and remind you, son, daughter, you're mine. Even if you're not prepared for it. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. We all want to know that we matter to the Father. We all want to know that we belong. Are you really looking for it? I want to tell you there's a few things that a father always does. You boys, young men, eventually you'll get married and I want you to make sure you plant this into your children. You ladies, you find a man that's going to help be a part of planting these three things into your family. Our Heavenly Father does this so well, and I'm going to show you all some scriptures where he does it because I want you to remind you this is what he does. A father always gives you an identity. He always sets a standard, and he always gives you direction. What I say? Identity, standard, direction. All right, can we get a reader up here? We're going to read Hebrews 10. Twelve through twenty-six. All right, let's get it. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he had perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Keep on going, amen. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed by pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Amen. Give it up for our reader. I want to talk, walk y'all through three verses. Hebrews 10, 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after the days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Has anybody just been in a situation where you're like, man, I shouldn't do this? Or you've been in a situation where you're looking around and you're like, you know what, I, I, probably sh I think I should go do this. 
A lot of times people don't understand that they, God is talking to them. He's always talking. And sometimes you don't get the dreams and visions like I've had and praise the Lord that I've got that those are gifts. But one thing that is very similar with all of his children, part of the blood covenant that he made with us is he'll begin to write his laws on your mind and on your heart. You'll begin to know that you're his. He's setting your identity. You know what? He's whispering to you. You're mine. We don't do that. You're mine. This is where we go. Why would he give you that? I remember one of my friend's dads, or one, of my, one of my friend's sons went off to college and, and he was like, man, how's college? And he was like, you know, dad, there's some shady situations that came on. He's like, yeah, what'd you do? And my friend was so nervous what his son was gonna say. It was hilarious. That better not happen with my children. But anyway, so, so he said, what'd you do? And he said, you know, dad, honestly, even if I wanted to go do wrong, just something on the inside keeps on making me not want to do it. Ah, God has marked you. You're his. This is your identity. Don't try to cater to the world. Don't try to make yourself look like the world. I remember calling a really superstar college football player when I was in the pros, and I said, brother, I had this dream. I said, in the dream, I had this ruler in my hand and I swung it over and hit you in the head with as hard as I could. And I pointed at you and said, stop wondering what it's like to be one of them. I didn't even say it. His team went on and did great. He had a great season. And I saw him like later on that year, like at the ESPYs or something. And I was like, hey, what was that dream all about? He's like, dude, you saved my life. God is speaking to his children. He uses the Holy Spirit and he uses other people to always whisper, here's my laws, here's how we do it. Uh, next verse, uh, John 10, 24. Love this verse. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Who do you roll with? There's a standard that God's children have. Our posse kind of carries a standard. I mean, when you look around, are the people closest to you stirring you up to be godly? Or is it just kind of like at a Christian school we can kind of behave and do some good behavior modification? Some of us dudes can have Christian game. What kind of friends do we really have? What's the standard that, that God has set for us? Do we stir one another up to really love people, to get to know them and say, yeah, hey, I love you enough not to let you keep any of that dirt that's on your face, but also love you enough to kind of inspire you to say, man, let's, keep, let's go for it. Blessed are the three things a father does, identity, Standard. What was the last one? Direction. Hebrews 10, 26. For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. Where do we really want to go? How do we want this story to end? I know I think differently, but I'm always like, man, like I, like, I was like one of those kids that would go back and read the end of the story. Am I the only one that did that? I wouldn't have to watch movies. I'd be like, yeah, let's just go to the ending. People are like, I hate watching movies with you. Where are we going? Well, here's what the Father tells us. If we can live a life deliberately sinning, then Jesus wasn't there for us. So let's be real. Like if y'all come out to our house and we got a nice little farm and people come and pools and all that and it's really cool, it's a lot of good time. But if I don't know you, you don't get in. 
If y'all know my kids, I mean, I got a kid clause, you know what I mean? And, and that awesome how God does that too with us? He got a kid clause. His name's Jesus, right? You don't know Jesus. You ain't getting in. Where are we going? What direction are we going? If we can look sin and know the truth, this is not what God wants, or this is the opposite of where God says to go, and we can deliberately do it, there's nothing else. You can't earn Jesus, and you can't earn heaven. A father gives you the identity that you have. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. A God sets, our God sets the standard for who you are and how to go live it out. And our God points you into the right direction. Let's stir one another up for God's good works. Y'all feel me? Let's play some music. I want to pray for everybody. Whenever I go somewhere, I always want to just challenge people. I want to challenge and inspire people. Man, this is why I'm on this planet. I want to awaken the God-given identity, the God-given talents, the God-given assignment in each and every one of you. Some of y'all's assignments could be simply, can I be a godly friend while I'm on this campus? And some of y'all's assignment is, man, can I build myself to be ready to go change the world? Can I be a champion for Christ? All the trophies, all the awards, they're all tarnish. I'm still getting awards, still getting awards. I've been retired 10 years but they'll all tarnish. But the souls that God uses me to go win for his kingdom go generations. Have you accepted the assignment? Have you accepted your true identity? I pray you have. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each and every person that hears my voice. People here, people on TV, people that will watch this later. God, that they would take on the assignment that you gave them. That they'd walk in the giftings that you gave them. That they would hold on to the true identity that you gave them. Unwavered with loyalty to you. Lord, let your will be done in each and every one of them. Give them the will to want your will. Let it all be done for your glory. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
some testimonies in this place today. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Let's pray together. God, today we thank you that you are the one that works the miracles in our lives, that leads us in the path that we're to take. God, that you're the one that has your hand upon us. And so I just pray for every person gathered in this room today, those watching today. God, we do not understand and we do not know what you have in store, what is yet ahead for us. So God, I pray that even today that you would prepare our hearts to be faithful, to be obedient, and then, God, when you take us where you take us, God, that we will show up and say, God, here we are, use us. And, Lord, for that, we give you the praise. And today, ultimately, and far more importantly, we also today give you the praise and the worship and the glory. We give you the thanks for the fact that you loved us so much that you sent your only son, Jesus, that he died on the cross for our sins, that he rose again three days later, and that through believing in him that we have salvation in his name. Thank you for the gift of salvation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, guys, before you leave, just one moment if we could. Hey, Sean, come up real quick. Where are you, Sean? And Dylan, if you'd, you'd bring, uh, grab the stuff there right behind, uh, right over there. Or somebody's got them. Okay, cool. So, Sean, you said you wished you had a shirt, right? All right, well, we, we got you a shirt. Come on over here real quick. So he said he was a Liberty dad. So there it is, Liberty Dad. So now he's covered. There it is. And I'm starting to think that uh, that shirt is not going to fit, Sean Alexander. So we're gonna have to get you another one. And we also have a shirt for your wife that you can take home to her as well. And so that's for Valerie, there it is. Hey, did you appreciate having Sean Alexander here today? All right, God bless you, you're dismissed. And go Flames tomorrow.